So we decided to do this video because we wanted to, um, hopefully there's going to be somebody out there who's maybe doing some research on home dialysis, who's thinking about making the move from in-center dialysis to home dialysis, um, to show you that it's, it's a really a scary idea when you start thinking about it and when you're in the training, which is about a four week period, it seems like it's a lot and it seems like it's going to be almost impossible to ever be able to do it on your own, but once you get the hang of it and you know what you're doing, it's not so scary. When you first make the transition from training to home, the first couple weeks are kind of hard. Um, it's a big adjustment and it's, it's scary being on your own, but it's worth it. So much better for me to do dialysis a little bit every day instead of being hooked up to a machine for three and a half, four hours every other day. Um, I have a little bit more energy. Um, I have a little bit more color, I think. I'm not as pale as I used to be. Um, I'm not as, I don't feel as sick as I felt especially on the, the after the dialysis sessions, it's, it's easier on me. And I really like, the, the thing that I like most about home dialysis is that I feel that I'm being proactive. When I'm doing this, I feel like I'm empowering myself, I'm in control, I'm keeping myself alive, and husband is, is healthy. Good. Jelly, you got anything to add? Hey, wake up, you're on TV. This is the equipment we have set up in the corner of the living room. Up top we have what's called the cycler, which does all the work, all the machine parts. Below here, this is called the pure flow. This is where the dialysis is made. It's a pre-mixed pack that gets mixed with our pack water, gets purified by this pack here, and then it makes this batch of dialysis in here which is warm to approximately body heat so it keeps Tammy warm when her blood is going through it. It's all programmed up. It's good for two dialysis treatments. Um, it holds 60 liters of treatment and each one of her treatments is 30 liters each. And it's connected to water line and a waste line which I have going through the basement. I drill the hole and it goes into the basement where it gets um, water source and then the uh, drain line goes into the sink downstairs. Uh, to get started I'm going to open this up and then there's a switch on the back that I turn on and the machine starts booting up. All right, so I'm going to get the cartridge ready. Every time Tammy does the analysis we use one of these disposable cartridges. I'm not really sure what all these tubes and stuff are for but this thing here is the main filter that cleans her blood. It's kind of like a big fancy coffee filter. And I'm going to take this and I'm going to put it in the machine. We do a good job of making it obvious where everything gets lined up and put into place. And what's the machine called? It's a cycler. And the bottom machine is the pure flow. I explained earlier. Just gonna close this door. A couple connections you gotta make first. And then we hook it up to the saline bag. And what we're doing now is called priming the machine. Just cycle the saline through everything and get it ready. It takes 15 minutes exactly, no more, no less. Press this button and it'll go through its self checks and tests and it does it for 15 minutes, pulls all the saline through and it gets everything ready. So now we wait. And every time you do a treatment you fill out a flow sheet. It keeps track of all of your information, um, helps you figure out your weight and how much uh, fluid you need to remove. Um, I haven't weighed myself yet, but my dry weight, which is your weight after dialysis, is 56 kilos. 
We also found it helps if you have a puppy playing close by, making a lot of noise, interrupting your video. Jelly, say hi to everybody. Okay, carry on. And I look back to the sheet from my previous dialysis session to get my post weight, which was 55.5 kilos. All right, so then I'm going to get my weight. And we have a scale that doesn't like to work that gives us my weight in kilos. Yesterday was my day off, so I tend to be, well, I'm not too much over, 57 kilos. So we need to take off one kilo. One kilo, which is just two pounds, which is good. One advantage of doing it at home is you have to take off less each time because you're doing it every day. Right. You get two days off. Yeah. But and never two days in a row. No. And it's so much easier on you. And then we have um, pre-treatment data collection. We just want to know how you're feeling. Short of breath. Is your fistula access okay? Is there any drainage? Is it um, thrilling? Can you hear the, the blood rushing through and all that? So we just fill out that. They want to know if you have... Um, any digestion problems, mobility problems, have you been to the hospital since your last treatment, um, things like that. For each treatment, Tammy has to take her vitals, temperature, and blood pressure. Almost everything you see in this video, including the little stuff like this blood pressure machine, even the thermometer is all, supplies, all supplied by a uh, supply company. Jelly, what are you working on there? Looks like she's chewing on a toy motorcycle. Just a quick update. Um, I'm getting ready to draw up what is called heparin, uh, which keeps my blood from clotting. And now she goes to put that back in the fridge because it needs to stay cold so it doesn't get spoiled, I guess. That's where the heparin lives. Lily, you got anything to add? We find the dogs don't help much. They mostly get in the way and try to trip us. But that's okay. We love them. All right, it's been 15 minutes and the machine's beeping at us. It's got eights on all the displays. That means it's ready to go. So I'm going to press the meet button. Now the display is going to change to 1, 2, 3, A, B, C, 9, 8, 7, and count down there. I press meet again. Let me go to the screen. Now we're ready for the part that they call snap and tap, which means we got to get all these air bubbles out of the um, lines so they don't find the Tammy's blood. Mm, you already pushed. Hmm? No, never mind. I don't know what I'm talking about. Basically, the way it was explained to us is we want to be patriotic and go red, white, and blue. So I'm going to start with the red. And this is called snapping and tapping. And you really give the, the lines a good tapping, snapping, to get all these little air bubbles out. Take the Filter here off. Give it a good whack to get all the bubbles out of this thing. I want to get as many air bubbles out of the system as possible so they don't go into her blood. That would be bad. It's possible to get all the air out, but the little ones aren't going to do too much damage. It would actually take a lot to be fatal or cause problems, but you always wanted to get as much air out of the system as possible. Blood does not like to have air bubbles in it. three syringes full of saline. I'll show you what we do with those later. We need to flush Tammy's lines, her needle lines, once they're connected. So we steal the saline from the bag here. We need one for each needle, and then we need another one for when we're done with treatment.
guy will hang out until we're done. I'm gonna take my blue line. Connect it to this. Oops. And now we're ready to program in our numbers. All right, so now it's time to calculate the fluid removal. And fluid is of course, you urine that you're not urinating out when you're in, in stage renal failure, um, and also other toxins that build up in your body that your kidneys naturally filter out. So my target weight, my dry weight, 56. My weight today was at 57. So we subtract the dry weight from the weight today. Target removal, one kilo. And then we always add in 0 0.3 for saline. And I always use a calculator because this is something that you don't want to ever get the decimal point in the wrong place because that would be bad. And so, they're both really bad at math. Yes. So the, we get the number for the total fluid that we need to program into the machine. And then we move that down here and divide it by two, which will tell us how much fluid we are going to remove per hour that I'm on the machine. going to be a nice easy session today. The more fluid you have on your body, the harder the dialysis is, the worse you feel, the more your blood pressure is going to drop, the more you're going to pass out, the more you're going to sweat, the more you're going to shake, you're going to vomit, your muscles are going to cramp up like that. Um, the more you're going to beg your husband to take you off the machine and then you just get through it minute by minute and then you carry on. Well said. And while she washes her arm, I'm going to put the numbers in the machine. What you washing? My hands and my fish gloves. Why is that important? Uh, because you do not want to get an infection in your fish gloves. cleanser on my fistula for my first step in cleaning it. I do this for a minute and then I'll use my needles. The blunt needles come with a special little scab picker. Once I'm done cleaning it I will pick the scabs and then I will scrub it again for a minute and then wipe it down with alcohol. You'll be able to see but there's actually two holes one is the arterial, one is the venous, one takes blood away, the other returns it. And like Tammy mentioned before, we use the exact same holes every single time so a hole forms kind of like uh, pierced ears. So all you have to do is pick the scab off, which is kind of gross, but it's a lot better than finding a new hole every single right. time. And you can see from my three years on dialysis with using sharp needles, the scars that go... Battle scars all the way down and my fistula is very um the fistula surgery in itself usually isn't so you're not going to have a scar like this so in depth but my first two failed and in order to create this one because i have no other good veins which is typical for dialysis patients they had to like pretty much cut my arm open like it was filleted open. It was filleted open and they brought up a vein from down here to up here in which they connect to an artery and create what is basically a super vein. And it is huge. And before that, it took a long time to get that prepared with several surgeries over months and months. She had catheters attached here to her chest that went directly into her and veins inside. Over here with all these scars. Is it on that side? Yep, I there's the scars right sides. there. That's not ideal because they stay in your body 24-7 and they're prone to infection and, and you got to keep them clean and you got to keep them dry and it was terrible. And the tube goes right down, like right by your heart. So an infection on the, the tubes can lead right Which down Which you had your heart. several times. Yes. And you had to get them replaced how many times? I don't even remember. Six times. And that's a whole procedure practically like having surgery. Mm -hmm. Go to the hospital, knock you out the whole nine yards. So now I open my needles, and each one has the delightful little scab picker. And so I start on my arterial, or is this my venous? I always get them confused. 
That's the arterial. I have a hard time because this one, the it's building a bump right there. Does that look like it's good? We're almost ready to put the needles in. Tammy's going to put a tourniquet on her arm. Let's make her fish all nice and plump and juicy. You see, this is the actual vein right here. That's how big it is. And since she can't do it herself, I'm going to give the camera to her. Well, I can do it myself. I just think it's easier for you to do it. Can you throw on? Can you get a good shot? I'm trying. Okay. Alright, so here's the needle. It's called a blunt needle because even though it looks kind of sharp, it's technically not sharp. I'm going to line it up here. Put it in the buttonhole. You can see the blood starting to flow in already. Just push it in there. I'm going to take a piece of tape and secure it. And I'm going to do the other one. Up here. Nice and easy. Sometimes they don't go in this well. Kind of have to fidget with it a little bit. Tape it up. I don't want to bleed this line. So blood all the way to the end. I'm going to clamp it off. Same thing with this guy. Bleed it. Clamp it. And I'm going to tape it up a little better. Can you get the, the oh. tourniquet off? Take it off so our arm doesn't blow up. Tape it up nice and good so these they don't fall out. Okay, now I'm going to take these syringes we made before with saline. And I'm going to flush each line to make sure that it's open and flowing well. Goes right into her vein, clamp it off. My arm looks really chubby from this angle. I think it looks adorable. Hmm. Number two, I put a little blood in there just to get the air bubbles at the end kind of into the tube. There's air bubbles at the end, I don't want to push those in. Now I'm going to take the heparin that Tammy prepared before, unscrew the syringe, take this guy off, replace it with the heparin, I'll draw some blood in, draw it back out in a couple times so it mixes in with the blood. And once a month we draw blood for my doctors at uh, the dialysis center and at the same time we draw blood for the transplant clinic in Milwaukee and the transplant clinic at Mayo. And we use these tubes to draw the blood and we have, what's the little sheet machine called? Centrifuge. A centrifuge. So we have a little blood lab in our kitchen now. Now we're going to connect to the lines to her tubes. I'm going to start off with the venous. We remember because this is blue and blue is at the top and blue is the sky. So we connect the blue sky tube to the top one. And then we connect the red one which I guess is hell. No, roses. Roses. Hell. <laughs> All right. Connected. I'm going to unclamp all four. I'm going to take the camera from my lovely bride and I'm going to press the kidney machine button. And you'll be able to see as the blood starts flowing from Tammy into the machine. It's going to go through all this stuff in here through the filter. And now we're pumping really low. So we want to bump up the flow rate from 200 to 300. And it's going to do that. And we up our dial. See? Each time we get the pump going at a higher rate, this number here that says 432, that was 4 hours 32 minutes. It's going to go down each time. 
now it's at 333. Typically we run for about two and a half hours once we get the pump up to the proper speed. Right, and if your weight is up and you have more fluids to remove, your treatment's going to run longer. are staying steady. Um, you never want them to get as high as the number, the blood right here. been on the fit, uh, machine for 15 minutes now and after the first 15 minutes and about 30 minutes after that the machine goes into a check that run uh, does a check all the systems and that's the opportunity we take to take her blood pressure we have to take her blood pressure several times during treatment just to make sure that everything looks good if her pressure gets too high or too low she'll start feeling real sick and it's a sign that something's wrong hours later and Tammy is done so I'm going to show you how to take her off the machine and I'm going to stop this take off this saline that I set up earlier and I'm going to place it over here hmm. clamp Sorry. this well, I normally take one of those but I only have one hand here I'll do it Watch this Red line, red to red. I'm going to press this button, rinse back, and it's going to take all the blood that's in the lines, put it back in her body. And it's also going to give her um, 300 cc's, I think it is, of saline. And in the meantime, she's flushing. I think it's milliliters. Milliliters? I don't know. Some, no, some metric thing. And she's given some saline in that one to clear the line. Alright, so we took off both lines and she's completely free from the machine. So now we're going to take the needles out. Pass that to her. I'm going to take this tape off. We're wearing these gloves and mask once again to try to eliminate the chance for infection as much as possible. Now your fistula, as anybody knows who has a fistula and has experience with this, when you have a fistula it no longer bleeds just like a regular vein. The blood literally shoots out of your arm across the room so you have to be very careful. A little bit of gauze over it. And then grab a pin in the short one. She will pull it out herself. Sometimes it likes to stick. There we go. Got it. Now she's pulling the arterial line. Go in our little sharps container eventually. Getting blood all over the place, and then she's gonna sit there for about five minutes. Mm, closer to 10. Closer to 10, wait for him to cut off. If she would remove her fingers right now, I would literally get sprayed with blood. It's very strong. The Maybe machine's barking at me because it's done. This part's kind of boring, but I'm just gonna shut it off, take all this stuff out, 
wipe it down, clean it, record her final numbers, and we're done. And we're gonna go to bed. Yay. Thanks for watching, everybody. We're all done. If you have any questions at all, feel free to ask in the comments below, and we'll get back to you. Uh, please visit Tammy'sBrokenBeans.com to uh, if you're interested in helping us out in any way possible. We appreciate it because it's been three years now, and Tammy is still waiting for a kidney. So uh, any help you can give us to help find her kidney is much appreciated. And I would like to add to that that although Rob is not a match for me, he has been approved as a donor uh, in the kidney exchange program through St. Luke's and Milwaukee, Wisconsin, and we're also working on getting him approved for that uh, through the Mayo Clinic in Rochester. Um, basically, if you need a kidney um, and Rob is a match for you, he will give you your his give you one of his nearly 100% perfect kidneys and uh, you would find somebody to give a kidney to me and the surgeries would happen at the same time. So it's um, quite an amazing thing and hopefully somebody's out there that's going through what we're going through. <laughs> that we can help each other out. Bye everybody, thanks for watching.